I'm Nidhi Chu. I'm glad to have you all joined here for the talk titled "Wearing the Hat of an Ethical AI Solution Architect." But before I proceed with the agenda for the talk today, I'll quickly introduce myself. I am an AI ML innovation leader carrying over a decade of experience. Uh, I've spoken at multiple international forums uh, like Predictive Analytics Worlds and Open Data Science Conference, to name a few. My core focus has been on following data-centric science, and I'm passionate about promoting responsible and ethical use of AI. I'm an AI ethicist, and I've also conducted many workshops demonstrating how to embed the use of ethics in AI. And apart from that, I'm an advocate for DNI, and I've been associated with many forums promoting women in technology. So let me quickly take you through the agenda for the talk today. The title also describes it a little bit, but I'll focus on ethics in AI and give you a definition of what do they exactly mean. What are the gaps and challenges that we observe in operationalizing the uh, ethics in AI's powered solutions? There is a very intriguing concept of push and pull, which is going to come towards the middle of the talk. So stay tuned for that. Most of the time, when we talk about ethics, uh, bias is the first thing that comes to our mind. So I'll explain what is bias, and uh, it's beyond the technical term terminology. What are its implications? And finally, what is the impact of having an unethical AI solution and being a user of it? How it impacts the users? And what are the action items that an AI ethical architect can take? So what is uh, ethics? And over the last few years, we have seen that there have been rapid adoption of AI systems in many industries, specifically in high impact applications, for example, healthcare, judiciary, and banking domain, as much as we can call it as a rise of AI systems. So uh, as we understand with high impact applications, the meaning is that they have a high impact or, or life changing impact on the end user. And when it happens, we need to make sure there is ethical framework with which the solutions abide by. But what do we mean by ethics? Ethics means that there, the, the, the whole definition of ethics is very abstract and theoretical and difficult to define it. But no matter how carefully we are curating those ethical rules, there is always going to be someone on the other side. So who decides what is ethical and who needs to comply with the code? For example, in an ML solution, when there are predictions, there is a human expert who can always validate that. In case of ethics, do we have an ethics expert who can validate that this particular prediction or the output given by the model is the most apt or correct? So that's the ethics definition, which was a little loosely defined, but the definition for AI is certainly not. So what does AI mean? So AI is the capability of a machine to mimic the human behavior so much that it does not need explicit guidance of how a human behaves. So we don't need to explicitly code it up, right? So if it is tied to human behavior, we need to understand how do we as humans function. So what are the challenges in the journey when we think of operationalizing ethics? And what do operationalization specifically in terms of ethics mean? It means that it's not a particular related project. It's not specifically with respect to a data science or technology term. It means that within an organization, there is a well-defined framework with which we can scale up our ethical solutions. We mean, uh, we understand there is a definition of fairness. Do we have explainability modules that define the model outcomes? Is there a way that we can explain why a model is giving a certain predictions and what is uh, when is the right time when the, we cannot have enough confidence in model prediction and we need to go back and debug it so these are some things which are span organization wide and come when ethics is adopted as a culture in the organization so we have the these guidelines in the market for last few years for example in 2019 approximately we had 80 such guidelines and tools but still a lot of unethical AI powered solutions news have hit the guide, have hit the headlines. 
So why is that? What is the reason behind that? It's primarily because all those guidelines, they typically talk about ethics or the principles of ethics at a fairly high level. They definitely tell you about what is ethics and what are those principles, but they don't focus on the how part of it. And the how part is what is the AI practitioners or the data science community needs the most. How can we embed those principles into the implementation when we are developing our ML solution? I'll give you an example. For example, there is a mathematical formulation. If I, there's a function which takes two values as an input, A and B, always, and if the function is to sum it up, always the output would be A plus B, right? But in ethics, it doesn't happen always. It might fulfill one context or scenario very well, but it might not fill in the another context altogether. So it it's largely context driven and has some bit of subjectivity entailed in it due to which it becomes difficult to measure it. Also, there are a lot of prior beliefs and rationales which are not well defined that lead to difficulty in adopting the ethics and AI solutions. At this point, we also need to understand that algorithms are not good or bad in themselves. We cannot say the algorithm was unethical or this particular algorithm is ethical. These are just technology. But the design choices we make while developing that solution is what is definitely ethical or maybe considered as unethical if it is. Push and pull. So this is one paper that I read last year, which is talking about operationalizing AI ethics. I highly recommend everyone to give, a, uh, to, to give it a read. It mainly takes the whole theoretical approach of understanding ethics to a more question-based scenario. Some of the summary of this paper is what I've listed here and how it is labeled as push and pull. Why am I calling it as push or pull? The reason is we then, we initially laid down the guidelines. We assumed that AI practitioners in the industry, they already have a reasonable understanding of what those principles mean. And based on that understanding, a certain guidelines were laid down. So when we broadcast certain information, this is called as we are pushing some information into the system. Now, whether somebody is acting upon it or there are follow-up questions, we don't really get to know. What we are promoting here is a pull-based model. So what does that do? That practitioners, they follow those guidelines, try to put them into practice, and whatever problems they face, then it's a pull-based system. They raise those queries and questions, and together we as a community come together and understand how those principles can be better put into practice. What are those extra steps, or what are those barriers that are not letting us effectively operationalize ethics into practice? Some of the examples that are listed in this paper are First, to understand the current under, uh, first to uh, enable the current understanding of the practitioners. What do they understand by ethical principles? How are they translating these principles, these theoretical concepts, in, when they have to put it into practice? How are they able to code them up? What is the basic motivation? Why should anyone be bothered about ethical principles and putting them into design practices? So one of the response coming from the survey that the results of that survey has been put into this paper, you are again free to read it out. But one of the common answer is that it enables trust in the customers. So trust is a big word and it definitely is a bigger motivation to embed and think about ethics. But what could be the possible barriers? So if trust is a bigger enabler for us to act on enabling principles, then what are the barriers that lead us to that stop us from translating those principles or that stop us from putting those extra effort into translating those principles into practices, time and resources. A lot of organizations think that the time spent in these uh, translation and in, when putting these principles into practice kind of erodes their competitive question because they, are, they become a little slower in terms of putting effort into innovation. That same effort goes into translating those ethics and putting them into design. But the, how can we assist the practitioners or the data science community so that they are better able to understand and put and code these ethics into practice? The answer is case study. Because we already have historical examples, it should be enough for us to know where the previous solutions and the architects of those solutions fell through so that we should not be doing the same mistake. 
but as we have seen empirically those mistakes are continuously happening and we have a lot of examples that we are still repeating those mistakes so the best solution is to do it by practice and that would be done through a case study i'll give you an example of how case study should look like at the end of this talk you should take it up and talk try to solve a case study for yourself to see whether you are able to develop that ethical lens by yourself or not bias and its implications so whenever we talk about i think the first word that comes is that the outcome of it is bias it was biased towards a particular group or group of people uh, but the bias is could is not just restricted to data or an algorithm it could be the way we input the output bias could be present in any step of an ml project life cycle it could be in the data quality issues it could be when we are collecting the data if we don't have any particular age group or a country or a class of people being shown to the model during training time that could be a bias as well if we are doing some data transformation and we see that we don't have the target label available it's missing in some of the records sometimes it happens that we loosely eliminate all those records assuming you have the luxury of dealing with a uh, uh, large scale data that leads to misrepresentation for a certain group it could be for a particular gender race or color and if you are dealt with imbalanced data are you taking enough uh, are you taking enough measures to augment the data or do you have enough examples for the model to learn for minority classes or well? uh, have you adjusted the classes these are all the measures that we need to make sure that during our implementation there is no bias included but we understand that building an ml model is not an easy game and there are a lot of variables at play so everything cannot be made available at a particular time you have to keep going so nobody is stopping you from that what we expect is to have a standard process with which we can identify the assumptions or the constraints under which we are building the model and try to document them as and when they arise and solve and try to mitigate those risks as much as possible if it happens to be today or later in the project life cycle if there is a work around when it is well documented it's a collaborative effort anyone either you or your team they can always go back and refer to those assumptions and see whether they hold true now as well lastly when we talked about case study so case study is something for example you pick a particular solution and think of it when when you are proposing a particular ai powered solution what is its objective who is going to be the end user and what is going to be the impact on those user the degree of impact is it going to impact their life right or it's about the choices they are going to make based on this model outcome is there a particular way that you are able to identify it and are those risks all mitigated and covered uh, is there any corner case that you need to kind of document and analyze those constraints if it is not well covered have you been able to communicate and act upon them in a timely manner when you try to do this exercise project by project one solution over another and you are able to deal with them so it's about developing that ethical lens with which you are able to encode those solutions so what's the impact if something goes wrong so for, if we talk about fairness it can definitely deprive someone from the quality of service Uh, the bias solution can lead somebody to not have an appropriate access to goods and services like education loan or housing which can take a toll on their medical emotional or financial health so to put in risk terms it can lead to inappropriate access of opportunities unequal access of opportunities to humans based on the grounds of their characteristics such as race age or gender and this kind of discrimination is highly discouraged So, what are the action items on our plate then? There is no one single top solution. So, healthcare industry has been has set a golden standard for us. It has been in for quite decades, and the it holds the ethics of highest standards. The on the ground developers they have those skills with which they can identify and mitigate the ethical risk. And accountability is the key. If they feel they are empowered enough and they are accountable for the solutions they are putting in the market. they feel the need to to be able to explain the impact they know how their glass box model should be should be outputting a certain predictions for which we need to sensitize and incentivize the employees by giving them certain training the workshops tool kits making them aware of what all guidelines exist in the market and the golden standards 
cross functional governance teams also plays a critical role in it it can the bias or unethical issue can escape one pair of eyes but if you have a multidisciplinary team coming and consisting of legal compliance product engineering sciences and leadership the chances are less that it will pass through so identifying the right stakeholders if you have found out an issue whom to raise it, that issue to there needs to be an escalation matrix what kpis are you going to monitor and there needs to be a quality assurance plan the ethics are always evolving so you can always have refer to an ai ethicist that would be able to help you in identifying the ethical problems we need to always scrutinize what possibly can go wrong and take the worst case scenario before even putting that product out during the development stage we need to have a fair estimate of how we expect this solution to behave in future is it our expectation versus we are preferring to for it to behave in a certain way we need to know that there is a clear difference between the two one can, cannot just sit and hope for the best that either the issue will not come or if it will come it will get solved on its own it doesn't happen so it needs to have a life cycle approach where asking uncomfortable questions right at the beginning so that a lot of time and effort has already not gone into it there has been enough time with which we can act on those issues resolve them in a timely manner it's not something that you can do once but it's something like an ml project is ever evolving and requires a collaborative team effort so with this i've come towards the end of the talk if there are any questions you can reach me out via linkedin and i'm happy to take questions offline as well thank you